From Master Flex is ready for this. Come on, y'all. It's the sounds of Funk Master Flex. It's the coolest legend. Got my man on the wheels and stairs. The rest is on you, my brother. Let's go. Breaking it down right now for y'all. <laughs> it's the sounds of Fun Master Flex that we buy you on the wheels and still. Let's do it now. Yeah, go, yeah, go. He's about to go there. personally special because I got one of the most influential DJs sitting right next to me. Uh, Funk Flex, Red Alert, thank you for being here. Respect, man. Respect to you. Um, I need to know from, from Red Alert, what are the disadvantages or some of the advantages that the DJs today have as opposed to when you were coming up? Well, you don't have to carry records no more. <laughs> that's, an you, that's, that's, you know, that's an advantage. That's an advantage. You know, one. I mean, it's just like saying that old record by Kai, my neck, my back. You don't have to lug that no more, you know? <laughs> but um, you got to learn to move along with the time because, you know, we no longer use um, rotary or push button phones. We on sales. That's right. So we have to adapt to what's in front of you. That's what it is. But I think not totally to everyone. Right. But I think that they elect the technology overcome them and them instead of them overcoming their technology mm. they come and got um kind of lazy right instead of learning how to perfect the skills learn how to blend how to scratch how to cut how to be accurate on time because that's what we had to learn now you can still do it but you depending on the technology to do it for you mm. uh, that defeat the purpose mm. the cue point like that funk flex that's same right. question yes 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 which is I'm sorry. What are some of the disadvantages or advantages some of the DJs today, right now, I trying think, to be DJs? What, what are they, you think? I think, like Red Lord said, the, the crates is probably the most obvious and visual, is that you don't have to carry crates anymore. Honey. You know? But there are some events that do uh, those vinyl events where you can yeah. bring the vinyl. Like I think the 45s and stuff. I think the vinyl has become... Um, Artsy uh, now? Like artsy, but it, it's, it's very cool to see. I think people like seeing it. And um, I don't know if people have been paying attention to the vinyl, though, but you can get, like, there's pieces that come out of limited edition you get for $200, $100. I think it's very cool. Yes. Um, in terms of, uh, you know what? Uh, I'll be honest. The art of DJing, I think I enjoy and I love, and I love what new DJs do with it. Mm -hmm. I think maybe an issue that's been happening with newer DJs is maybe their work ethic. I think it's not so much the uh, actual physical or the the uh, the obvious, which is the music. I think uh, I think patience is less for some of the newer DJs, and I think they're not as uh, uh, a little entitled. Right. But it's not it's, it's not a bad thing to be entitled if you're going to work hard and right. and achieve what you need to achieve. It's just a generation gap. That's all. Uh, <laughs> it feels like, it's not <laughs> really much because I mean even from this past time. That some of the DJs at that time was up and coming, they was trying to find shortcuts to try to get to where they want to be at. Mm -hmm. But it's just faster. a faster pace mm -hmm. now today than it was in the past. And I'm gonna talk from back here, the shortcut never works. <laughs> never fucking works. Niggas always wanna take the fast lane. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, it don't work, man. You gotta work hard work is what gets you to the point A to point B, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. When did Cool DJ Red Alert? First fall in love with DJing? I think it started 
first in the neighborhood because there was a guy by the name of Otis that had a mean sound system. And I was intrigued by listening to the sound system. You know, we used to hang right over by his crib and you hear it all throughout the project. And um, when I start Echoing. sneaking out to certain clubs under age, I was going down to the, to the spots downtown and um, you know, I was wearing my brother's older clothes, you know, for making, looking like a grown up. And then I was in maze watching some of the DJ sisters, um, PDJ Jones, Grandmaster Flowers, Paloma. But on a Saturday, I would go up to the Bronx and see a guy by the name of Cool Hurt. Mm. Change the game. And I learned to see the difference of what it is between the hip hop and the club. And the club. Two different vibes. Okay. All right, Flex, this is for you. Yes, okay. When did Funk Master Flex, Funk Flex, DJ Funk Flex want to be a DJ? Mm. And who was, the, who, was, who was that person? Who was that person you saw that, that gave you the fire to do what you do? Um, you know what? I, I don't, if I, if I say, I kind of like Red have two different experiences of it. Like, you know, there's hip hop and then there's maybe the club radio aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So I was young, so I didn't get to see a lot of the, the hip hop mm -hmm. aspect of it. I didn't ask who your favorite DJ was. No, 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 on I tape. No, I, I didn't ask you. What your, inspired me? Yes, yeah. What? Who was the guy or the person or the lady or the that made you like? I want to well, do this. Two, two people inspired me because the radio was what was important to me, and the radio was what I I understood and loved. Mm -hmm. Like you know, before when it, the hip hop was like it was great to understand it, but I didn't see how I fit in. Mm. I didn't see how I could fit into the hip hop thing. There, the radio, I felt like I could fit in. So. Um, you know, I listen to a lot of things, but I guess, uh, you know, Chuck Chill Out and Red Alert was my excitement point. That was my point of, uh, uh, I grew up on Kiss FM, so I, I may have missed the BLS era, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, mm -hmm. it, and it, I'll be honest, it was bougie to me. You know, it was bougie because the DJ kind of played the background on that radio station. Right. And Kiss FM was the first time I heard you know, between Chuck Chill Out and Red Alert, be put up front. Up front. The, the DJs were up the front. The superstar was born on cassette. Yes, it was up front, and it was that's where they were. So uh, that was my uh, excitement because they were on at nine o'clock, and that was like prime time, right around car time. Like it, it was, it was two part. It was prime box radio time in front of the park or your house, and it was prime time right around the car. So. I listened to uh, Chuck on Friday night, I listened to Red Alert on Saturday night, and that was, it wasn't just the music, I got the slang, I got what party was cracking, what slang was popular, because when they talked with the jock, they used the popular slang words. Mm. Um, what were I, some of those words you remember? Ah, man, I could tell you, even the word, even from the word chill out, you know, which was, you know, you didn't hear it, so yeah. tell nobody to chill out yeah. on the radio, yeah. you know, you hear it every day now, that was on the weekend, nine o'clock. And um, you know, Red used to call people a bum. You yep. know that 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 it, it, it meant something because it was, it was uh, it was it wasn't disrespectful. It was really like I'm cool with it you. It was a term of endearment. So you always have to read in between everything, you know. And rest in peace to Mr. Magic, but he's the first one I ever heard shout the boroughs. You know, right. he would yeah. say, and he would have a slang. It would be money making Manhattan. I remember that. And that was a like I was like, okay, so they're getting bread up there. Got it. Or the boogie down Bronx. Like you like, you know, people are spoiled now. We hear that all day, but that was That was that meant something. It meant an, an entirely a lot. I there's I have key moments, radio moments for myself as a kid. You know, uh Red used to do a clothing there was a clothing store named Simons. And and to me, that was like if Simons. you didn't get your gear there, wow. like you didn't mean nothing out here. You had to get you know, it was a big deal. And then wow. you know, Union Square. You know, that was my first I ever heard a commercial, a real commercial for a nightclub and a DJ and the movement. And it was it was Eric B and Rock Kim and Red Alert was spinning. And I remember going down there, it was fights in the street and trying to get in. And you eventually got in and then you got to dust your sneakers off because your shit got a little wrinkles on the line. It was on 14th Street, right? 14th Street? 18th Street off the road. 18th Street. That's what I'm saying. This was, two, street, this was street, 2000. Bad. Union Square, right? Around right yes. there? So this mm -hmm. was 2000 people. And seeing now the records that I hear on the radio is the first time I get to see the reactions. 
of the people. Yeah. So I I immediately was like, okay, this record's hotter than this record, and that record's hotter than this record. It was a it was putting a face or an eyes to the movement because there was no internet, there was no TV, the news didn't cover it, and that you know those experiences. Uh, I patterned the tunnel after Latin Quarter. You know that was my experience, mm -hmm. and then I saw the the artists. There was no VIP in you in, in Latin Quarter. The mm -hmm. artists mingled with the people, That's right. or they went in the booth with Red. Right. So I was like, I don't want no VIP at the tunnel. You know, like, and the artists could just grab the mic if they want. Like, all of that was dope. So that was, that's for me, you know, and Chuck Chillout's where I get that riding down the highway thing. Right. Because I used to ride the West Side Highway with him when I mm. carried his records. So that, when I shout that West Side Highway, that's me and Chuck's experience when I was growing up of, of, Hitting that, hitting that third lane and, and changing <laughs> like that, and then it was be it was, and we used to listen to Jeff Fox, finishing up the countdown because he uses the K down at eight o'clock, top, top eight, eight at eight. eight. Yeah, uh -huh. and then and then I knew, and then you would hear, uh, who's who who still works for the station now? Um, uh, Slade? Bob Slade. Bob Slade. Bob Slade. Uh -huh. Now, a real hip hop nigga remembers this. <laughs> Before the rap show used to come on. It would be an acapella of Bob Slade just talking about kiss information. Mm. Yep. And That's it was true. and it had so much echo on it. <laughs> so if you was at the movie theater, you hear fucking 855. You hear every radio adjusting. Like you know, you hear it before the shit even come on at nine. By the time nine o'clock, all the cars in the parking lot, you can hear Bob Slade's voice coming out. Because uh, uh. niggas know when that nigga shuts up, <laughs> it's over. It's, it's over. gonna happen. <laughs> and then from there on, it's just three hours of of the shit cranking. It was it was. I lived my life at nine o'clock on a Friday. What Saturday. about what about um other legendary hip hop radio shows uh, besides Red? Chuck, yourselves, um, guys that we could pay homage to. You know, oh man, first I gotta say, respect to Super Rock and Mr. Magic because he the one that really introduced hip hop to radio. Then it was on the independent yeah, station 105.9 WHBI, which Woo! became later on WNWK. Mm -hmm. And he used to be on like 2 a.m. on a Wednesday night or Thursday night? 2 a.m. 2 a.m. on a Wednesday night. 83. No, 80, 81. My bad. My, my bad. 81, he came on. And by 82, that's when he wound up going to BLS. But besides him, you also had um, the Awesome Two. You had Hank Love and DNA. You had mm -hmm. Jerry Blood Rock. You had the world famous Supreme Team. You had um, even, they didn't know. My man, um, uh, he, used, he did, he did the um, record Games People Play. Sweet tea? He, had a, he had a show on wow. there too, you know? And then, respect to the people that was doing college radio out there in Long Island. I'm talking about, you know, Wildman Steve, Wild Man and, Steve and Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre, you know, and Spectrum Sound and all that. Spectrum and, you know, Flav and all of them. So, you know, there was a lot. And respect to my man P5, WMYU. Red being modest. Though. Nah, he he. he red being modest. Red, it, it stopped and started with red alert. Like that's you know, that was the that's bar. It. That's the it. The bar. The bar but, was. But, but you gotta understand that people before you gotta bar. acknowledge the, them. Yeah, right. you but have the, to acknowledge them. You know, right. red's being. He's being political, but the bar, the bar. <laughs> you know, like there was mm. there was always a level of not just success, but an, an image and 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 the way you want it to be, and. And Red represented that because it was from the style of dress, uh, to hear him being in the videos, you know, playing the music, the artist, the 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 boogie down productions, the tribe called Quest. That was the that was the epitome of who you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. You wanted to break artists, have artists, DJ at the big club. You know, that was that I, I that was the first time. I mean, you know, you know, we heard that. Like the records being played and somebody saying, then we go into the club afterwards. Magic and them ain't do that. Like they was they were studio DJs and, and that energy, but but yeah. that's that was that was like that was what we kind of that was like the cold crush and flashing them on a smaller level uptown. Now we were hearing it on the radio, come down to the club. And we spoke to artist. my cousin, um, the original DJ Jazzy J, because he was on the radio before me. That's right. He did it for like two, two months. 
tough. But then, you know, he passed it on to me, and I just took it. And you well, took it. Oh, woo. But see, when Red was doing it, it wasn't cool. A radio DJ didn't become cool no. till later on. No. If you were a radio DJ in the beginning, they tried to make it like you were a cornball. Right. Yes. He they tried made, to play you because you were on a commercial platform. Uh, and and it was and it well, wasn't it like wasn't making not, records. You're not really official as you are in the club and in the streets. Got it. You know now you like how they say, if you go and pop, you sold out. Yes. That's what they were feeling about for they DJs that were doing on the radio at the you time. You couldn't you couldn't you couldn't get, uh, rest in peace to Star Child, uh, Boosie B. Uh, you couldn't get them to come downtown. You couldn't get them to come downtown. You couldn't get them to do the radio. And they, you know, the big DJs at the time, even Capri, Capri did it for a little while, but it's not something you really wanted to do. <laughs> you know, that wasn't, there was no accolades to it. It was just, it's, but as you started to watch uh, a Red Alert and a Molly make it cool, then it was something that we wanted to do because we could see that you could, you could be, you know, still in the forefront as you played the records. Being a tastemaker was starting to become cool mm. in the mid nineties. Mm. And, that, and, that, and that's what I think was when you get instrumental that in the of, game. When you get that five minutes of fame, either you're gonna learn to enhance it or you're gonna abuse it. One or the other, or don't know, or just drop the ball. Right. So you have to learn how to build on it. And what they call as branding today is something that we had done in that past time. So anytime there was a chance for me to be in a video, any chance time it was for me to be along with different groups or MCs or even R&B and dance artists, you know, you, you link with them. So everybody start acknowledging because they hear the name, but now they match the face with the name, be involved mm. with a little bit of everything. We knew the artist respected Red. If I respect Karis one and he's in that video, then I know that he mm. respects him. If I go to Eric B and Rakim's video and they have the guns and the other shit and, and Red is standing there in that crowd, then I know that they respect him. So that's kind of how I started to understand it now that that radio DJ thing, like it's the same exact poor formula when Puff and Biggie came along. I saw how it was done. The artist, the relationship, and I seen how it was done with Red and, and, and Run DMC and, and, and all those groups. And, and you know the accolade, you, you know the accolade of cool was when you heard a, ra a, a, a rapper shout Red and Chuck on a record? Yeah. That was like... Everything. Yeah. Like, woo, we made it. <laughs> but that was... But see, some DJs, uh, what's the word that you call when you're... Some people were envious of right. that, right? I looked at it as if, oh shit, there's a chance for me. You know, and... and my a shout, and I, I don't remember which record I'm in, and, and to be honest, it's not the Biggie record. I think I got shouted in a, in a, in a uh, I'm a, I, I remember, it was a small group, and they, sh and they shouted me in red, it was my first shout. Um, it was these kids from Jersey, but they was respected. Uh, oh, it was JBC, JBC, oh. JBC Force, Force from Long Island, Long Island. Island, and it was like their second record. Their second record. It wasn't the big one, mm -hmm. but that was a big deal to me, because it meant I robbed. I mean, you know, you want to you earn. You want to earn a shout out on the back of the I wanted album. To, I wanted to ask that question. I was going to ask Red, when did you say to yourself or look yourself in the mirror and like, I'm here? Never. We're still trying. I am the guy. <laughs> there has to be a quiet moment, even if it's not publicly, where you're looking yourself in the mirror. After a shower, you might look at yourself in the mirror and like. I think my first time, I really acknowledge it, 85. First time I went over with Seas. Um, Africa Band Body, Ike C, one of the break dancers, Lisa Lee and I, we went over. And um, everywhere we was going, I had kids running up to me, asked for autographs because they found out who I am. I said, well, how did they get to find out about me? And Bam kept on saying Pirate Radio. I said, what is Pirate Radio? Which is illegal radio. They used to take the tapes from yep. here. And they were selling them out there. Bring them over there and play, and play the whole entire tape, commercials and everything. That's it. And that's when you say you in another country and people acknowledging you. Mm -hmm. And not only within there, but also in Japan, in Germany, mm -hmm. and all throughout. That's yeah. where I say, wow, you know, I had no idea. But meanwhile, you so much in the moment what you're doing, not knowing the 
feedback you get in return. 100%.